Okay, welcome back. And now for question number five from the specimen paper four for the 2020 syllabus. Here we have a question about um, basically algebraic uh, constructing equations and something like that. So it says the perimeter of the rectangle is 80 centimeters. They only gave us the width as x. So rectangle, so I know this must be x as well. Okay, so they didn't give us a width here, it's a length here. The area of the rectangle is a centimeter squared. Well, that's not very helpful. So the area is a squared centimeters. Okay, show that x squared minus 40x plus a equals zero. Okay, that's not so bad because we don't have to find what a is. All right, so now there's something missing here. And that is the length of the rectangle. They didn't tell us how the length and the width are related. So what I'm going to do is, well, nothing else we can do, let's just call it y. So if that's y, then that's also y. So we know about the perimeter. The perimeter is 80 centimeters. Now remember, the perimeter of a shape is the length of its outline. So for a rectangle, it's going to be um, 2x plus 2y. Okay, so you have 2x. For this particular rectangle, 2x plus 2y is equal to 80. That's like an equation we can like form from it. And we can actually simplify this equation a little bit because you can see that all of these terms are divisible by 2. So if we divide the whole equation by 2, both sides of the equation by 2, we've got x plus y equals 80. Now, we also told that the area of the rectangle is a. Okay, so the area we can write as the length times the width which is x times y so we have these two equations the first one we got there and this this one over here and how do we link them together and you know what can we do well one of the ways we can think is all right i need an equation which has x and a in it i don't want the y in it so let me keep this equation as my base because this one has x and y this one has x and a i need the a so there's no a in this equation. So let me call this, the. let's think about this equation as the one I'm going to base my answer upon. So I'll say, okay, a equals x times y. I don't want the y there. I want to have only a's and x's. So if I take this equation here and rearrange it to make, I did that on purpose, of course, to see who would spot the mistake. Well done for those who did spot it. You have to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So x plus y equals 40, not 80. Anyway, so you got y equals 40 minus x. Okay, so y equals 40 minus x. And you got a equals x times y. So we can replace this y with 40 minus x. Replace the y with 40 minus x because y is equal to 40 minus x. And I'm doing that because I don't want a y in my final equation. I don't see any y's in there. I just see x's and a's. So you're going to have x times... Instead of y, I'll have 40 minus x, and then you can expand. You have 40 times x, which is 40x, and x times minus x, which is minus x squared. Uh, but we want to, want to make it look like this, which we can do in one step. We can just say, okay, we need to um, bring the x squared on the side where it's going to be positive. So let's add x squared to both sides. You'll end up with x squared on this side, and Everything else has to be on that side, so we've got to take away the 40x from this side, so we take away from both sides. And you're left with nothing on this side, and you've got your plus a on the other side. So you have x squared minus 40x plus a is equal to zero. So we have answered part one. Okay, so this type of question, a lot of students, they get scared when they see something like this. So what did we do here? Okay, we, we marked down everything that they gave us. They told us that the... the uh, the, the width is x, they gave it on the diagram, so this is also x. They told us the perimeter is 80, so we thought, okay, we have to have an expression for the perimeter, but we need to know what the width is, or at least you know, represent the width with something. So I just called it y, I could have called it any other letter I wanted. So you had 2x plus 2y equals 80, and we simplified that equation by dividing both sides by 2. We end up with x plus y equals 40. And we also know the area is given by x times y for a rectangle, the length times the width. And then we looked at these two equations and we looked at what we had to show. We thought what we had to show doesn't have y's in it, only has a's and x's. So I focused on the equation which has x and a's in it. Because here there's no a's, there's x, and there's y, there's no a. Here there are all three of them are here. So let me focus on the one where it has a and x in it. Then I thought, okay, I need to get rid of this y. So I thought, okay, let's, let's replace 
the y with what y is equal to from the either other equation. Substitute y equals 40 minus x instead of y. And then we have an equation with just a's and x's, which are our objective. And we just manipulated that by expanding the brackets and bringing everything to one side. And it looks exactly like it's supposed to look. So that's how you deal with such questions. Then it says, when a equals 300, solve the equation x squared minus 40x plus a equals 0. So you're going to have x squared minus 40x okay, plus 300 equals 0. So we have to solve this equation by factorizing so that you can't use the quadratic formula, you can't use completing the square, you have to factorize. Okay, so you have to show that you put it into two brackets and you have factorized. So you think of two numbers which multiply together to give you a positive product and a negative sum. They must have the same sign and the same sign must be negative because you add them together, you get negative, you multiply them, you get positive. Then you think of two numbers multiplying together. So the product is 300 and this sum is negative 40. Okay, so you think of the numbers and I've got them in my head already. Um, 30 and 10 so it's negative 30 and negative 10 when I multiply them I get my plus 300 when I add them I get minus 40 now how did I think of it so some of you get confused when you see something like this um, what I thought of is it ends with zero so one of them must end with zero for sure okay and when you add them you're gonna get something ending with zero so if one of them ends with zero and you add them together the other one must also end in zero so I'm thinking okay one numbers will end in zero and when you multiply them you get 300 well 10 and 30 when you add them you get 40 so that's that was my kind of thinking behind that particular uh, you know conclusion there okay so that's how I got it um, if you really get stuck there is a method which I'm going to show you but not in something as simple as this on how to use your calculator to find the answer and work backwards um, so that you know in case you just got completely blank your mind goes blank you watch out for one of my videos on this particular topic factorizing and uh, algebraic manipulation and I will go through how to affect in fact I think I've done it in one of my previous videos anyway so here we can now say either x minus 30 is equal to 0 if two, two things multiplied together to give you 0 one of them must be 0 or the other one must be 0 so either x is equal to 30 or x is equal to 10 so you got here 30 or 10 are the solutions to this equation then this is when a equals 200 solve the equation x squared minus 40 x plus a equals 0 using the quadratic formula show all your working and give your answers correct to two decimal places so in this case now you're gonna have x squared minus 40 x plus 200 equals zero so this time they've told you specifically to use the quadratic formula okay and the quadratic formula is as follows and you need to know it so it's not going to be given to you in the IGCSE Cambridge exam so it's minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a now this should be engraved into your brain and you should be able to repeat it like a parrot okay um, when I go through completing the square in one of the um, videos I'll show you how it's derived uh, for those for those who want to know but anyway um, you don't have to write it down in the exam although it's better to uh, to get the marks if you write it down in the exam and you don't know how to apply it you won't get anything you have to be able to show that you've applied the quadratic formula okay so even if you don't write it down in this form but you've shown that you put the numbers in the right places you will get the marks but it's always a good idea to write it down in case so basically the a and the b and the c this is when you solve an equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero that's how you find the solution okay so a is a coefficient of x squared which is one b is a coefficient of x which is negative 40 and c is a coefficient well it's a constant which is plus 200 which is 200 so we're going to substitute those into the place they are in the equation so you've got minus b so it's minus be very careful it's minus minus 40 negative 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 40 plus or minus the square root of you have b squared which is minus 40 all squared including the minus sign minus 4 times 1 times 200 4 times a times c all over all over 
2 times a, 2 times 1. So that gives you 40 plus or minus the square root of 1600. That's going to become positive. Uh, minus 800, 4 times 2, that's 4 times 200 is 800 over 2. So that gives us x equals 40 plus or minus the square root of 1600 minus 800 is 800 over 2. And there we have almost the answer. We can now find the two values of x and round them to two decimal places and write the answer. So let's just take the calculator and do that. Oops, it's on some other mode now. Okay, what am I doing? Shift menu. Um, no, it just have to be menu, sorry, menu, and I want to go to one. Okay. All right, so I'm going to have 40 plus the square root of 800 divided by 2. And that gives you 20 plus 10 root 2, which is 34.14. So you're going to have x equals, I'll write the two values, 34.142. So x equals 34.142. And if I go back and change this plus to a minus, I'm going to have S to D button 5.857 dot dot dot. 5.857. It will continue on like that. Okay, so then we write the answers to one decimal play to two decimal places, which is 34.14, 34.14, and 5.86. Okay, now you can just make sure that you didn't make a silly mistake when you when you're doing this. Okay, so let's just cancel this and just show that we didn't make a silly mistake so you got minus minus 40 which you know is 40 anyway plus uh, you can't put the plus or minus you just put plus first and then change it to a minus later the square root of minus 40 squared okay i'll just put this i'll just do this like fully just to make sure minus 40 squared minus 4 times a times c which is 200 okay um, divided by and you got 2 times 1 which is 2 and that gives us our answers 2 plus 10 root 2 which was uh, STD 34.142 as we said and changing this plus not this, this one this plus here to a minus will give us the other answer which was 5.86 okay so we have the two solutions for this question part that's question, I think it's B or A part three. Okay, let's go to the next page. All right, so this is now a question to do with um, a word problem and it's to do with average speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually answer this in the next video because it's going to get a bit long. Okay, so we will stop there and the next video I'll do part B. Okay, so thank you for watching.